Hey there, this is Dr. Mungli. So this video is about mechanism of electron transport chain and what are the what is the number of ATPs that are synthesized from NADH plus H plus and FADH2. As you know, electron transport chain is located in the inner mem mitochondrial membrane. Now there are protein complexes which are embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So there are four fixed complexes present in inner mitochondrial membrane which are part of electron transport chain and they are complex 1, complex 2, there are three of them, then complex 3 and complex 4. These are four fixed complexes in electron transport chain and also we have ATP synthase present in the electron transport chain Sometimes we refer this as complex 5 in electron transport chain. And also we have two mobile complexes in electron transport chain and that is coenzyme Q which is also called as ubiquinone. And then we have cytochrome C here. So both are mobile complexes. And also note that coenzyme Q it is uh, derived from Furnacyl pyrophosphate, which is basically it's an intermediate in the cholesterol biosynthesis pathway. Now, complex 1, also called as NADH coenzyme Q oxidoreductase, that's because complex 1 is going to donate electrons to coenzyme Q. That is why this is called as NADH coenzyme Q oxidoreductase. Now, complex 2, there are three of them. So, one of the complex two is succinate dehydrogenase. So succinate dehydrogenase is a part of PCA cycle. So it is one of the enzyme in PCA cycle where FAD gets into the reaction where succinate is converted to fumarate, FAD is converted into FADH2 and that FADH2 enters into complex two. This is the complex two. Succinate dehydrogenase which is attached to the inner side of inner mitochondrial membrane itself is acting as a complex two. And another complex 2 here is like ETF, electron transferring flavoprotein. Electron transferring flavoprotein, it is part of beta oxidation of fatty acids attached to the inner mitochondrial membrane and that is also itself is acting as complex 2. And the third one is the glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. So this glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, uh, it's going to shuttle a uh, cytoplasmic NADH plus H plus into the mitochondria as FADH2 and that FADH2 is getting into means gives its protons into coenzyme Q. So that is why glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase itself is considered as complex 2 in electron transport chain. There are three proteins which are acting as complex 2 here and that is succinate dehydrogenase electron transferring flavoproteins and glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. All of them will make convert FAD into FADH2 and then FADH2 are given into the electron transport chain. Then I told you about coenzyme Q, it's a ubiquinone mobile complex in the electron transport chain. Then we have complex 3. Complex 3 is referred as cytochrome BC1 complex. Cytochrome BC1 complex, it is called because it has cytochrome B and cytochrome C1. Now you have cytochrome C here, this is cytochrome C which is a mobile complex and then we have complex 5 or 4 and that is cytochrome C oxidase. So cytochrome C oxidase is basically it gives electrons from cytochrome C and oxidize them basically they are going to donate it to oxygen and all that. So that is cytochrome C oxidase. Now let's move and uh, of course ATP synthase here that is complex 5 in electron transport chain. Now let's move on to see some, some, some of the constituents, other constituents present in the electron transport chain. So let's say complex 1 has FMN and uh, iron, iron sulfur cluster. And uh, then we have BC1 complex and also it has iron sulfur cluster, FES, iron sulfur cluster. And then we have cytochrome C oxidase, it has got copper A, then uh, cytochrome A, and then cytochrome A3 and copper B. So copper A, copper B, cytochrome A3. These are the things present in uh, uh, fourth complex that is complex 4 in electron transport chain here. So this, this is how the electron transport chain is arranged in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now let's move on to see uh, where NADH gets into electron transport chain and where FADH2 will get into electron transport chain. 
it all depends on the redox potential of molecule. Let's come to the redox potential here. So the electron transport chain basically it works on the redox potential. So any molecule which has got a negative redox potential, higher negative redox potential, so it acts as a donor of electrons. So a molecule that has got higher negative redox potential is going to act as a donor and a molecule which has a positive redox potential, higher positive redox potential, it will act as an acceptor. Now let's see what happens. NADH plus H plus, it has got a redox potential of negative 320 millivolt, which can also be written as negative 0.32 volts. This is the uh, redox potential of NADH plus H plus and the final one in the uh, electron transport chain is oxygen atom, one atom of oxygen that is FO2 is going to accept two protons to H plus and become water molecule H2O. So the redox potential of that particular reaction is positive 820 millivolt and it can also be written as positive 0.82 volt. That's the positive redox potential. It means you are going from a higher negative redox potential that is negative 320 millivolts to positive 820 millivolts. So the difference in this uh, electron transport chain complexes, it amounts to uh, negative 1.1 millivolts, sorry 1.1 volts. Now, as I told you before, any molecule that has got higher negative redox potential, it acts as an electron donor and any molecule that has a positive, higher positive redox potential, as act, it acts as an electron acceptor. In that sense, your NADH plus H plus will get into complex 1 of electron transport chain and it's going to donate its protons and electrons and be oxidized to NAD plus. And then the complex 1 what it does it is going to transfer these electrons to coenzyme Q. It is going to transfer electrons to coenzyme Q. Why? Because coenzyme Q, it has got a positive redox potential. So the redox potential of coenzyme Q, it is estimated around plus 30 millivolts. There is a positive redox potential. It means your NADH plus H plus with higher negative redox potential gets into a complex one, which has got a little negative redox potential, but it will be less negative redox potential than NADH plus H plus. That's why it is accepting it. And then it's going to donate its electrons to coenzyme Q. And this coenzyme Q, what it does, it is going to donate electrons to complex 3 here. And then complex 3 is going to donate electrons to cytochrome C. And cytochrome C will donate electrons to complex 4. And that means each of these complexes, as they go from complex 1 to complex 4, so the negative redox potential will move into higher positive redox potential. So that means any molecule that is accepting the electrons, it will have a little more positive redox potential than the previous complex. And then anything that is, it is given, say this co coenzyme Q is giving electrons to complex 3, that means complex 3, it has little more positive redox potential than coenzyme Q. That is why complex 3 is acting as an acceptor and coenzyme Q here, it is acting as a donor. So with this principle, what happens is, so your electrons present in NADH plus H plus will move from complex 1, coenzyme Q, complex 3, cytochrome C, complex 4, all the way to oxygen. Now oxygen is the final acceptor of electrons because its uh, redox potential is uh, positive 820 millivolts and that means you are basically operating between um, negative uh, 320 millivolts to positive 820 millivolts here. That means NADH is acting as a donor of electrons and uh, oxygen is acting as a final acceptor of electrons. Now let's see how many uh, protons are pumped from the oxidation of NADH and uh, how many uh, electrons, sorry, protons are pumped from the oxidation of FADH2. Now NADH plus H plus since it's, uh, it is the highest negative redox potential, it is entering into complex 1 and donating those electrons. So as the electrons are passing from complex 1 to coenzyme Q, 
and all the way to complex 3, then cytochrome C, complex 4. So this flow of electron, it has got lot of energy, lot of energy is released with the flow of electron. It has been calculated that around negative 25.5 kilocals of energy per molecule is released because of the transfer of electrons from oxidation of NADH plus H plus into NAD plus. So this much energy it is utilized, basically this energy is used by these complexes to pump protons from the matrix side of mitochondria into intermembrane space. So as the electrons are flowing from complex 1 into side of coenzyme Q, so the energy is tapped there and 4 protons are pumped from complex 1 and then complex 3 is going to pump 4 protons and complex 4 is going to pump 2 protons there. Okay, so their total there will be 10 protons pumped from oxidation of NADH plus H plus into NAD plus. Now coming to the FADH2. FADH2 it enters into complex 2 and also I told you there are 3 complex, uh, 3 uh, proteins that can act as complex 2. That is succinate dehydrogenase, ETF electron transferring flavoprotein, glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. All of them will make FADH2. So why FADH2 enters into complex 2 rather than getting into complex 1? It is because uh, redox potential of FADH2 is minus 220 millivolts and that means it can only enter into uh, give its electrons and protons to coenzyme Q rather than complex 1 because it, is, it doesn't enter into complex 1 because complex 1 has negative redox potential much more than 220 millivolts. Okay. Because of this what happens? So electrons and protons are given to coenzyme Q from FADH2 oxidation into FAD and coenzyme Q is converted to coenzyme QH2 and that will give its electrons to uh, and protons to cytochrome uh, complex 3 then cytochrome C complex 4. So with this oxidation of FADH2 into FAD will help in pumping of 4 protons from complex 3 and 2 protons from complex 4. So total 6 protons will be pumped from oxidation of FADH2. Now see the difference here. NADH plus H plus oxidation helping in pumping of 10 protons from matrix into intermembrane space. FADH2 oxidation helps in pumping 6 protons from matrix into intermembrane space. Okay. So, as this oxidation is going on continuously, so there will be more and more protons built in the intermembrane space. Lot of protons are built in the intermembrane space, so the gradient is created. As the gradient is created, there will be a proton motive force that is created. This proton motive force is the one, it is going to allow these protons, means uh, the protons as the concentration is built up in the intermembrane space, now they start to come back into the matrix through this ATP synthase F0 subunit which has got a pore for protons and then it falls into the matrix here. Okay, so ATP synthase it has got F0 component and it has F1 component there. Now the F0 subunit is the one which allows protons to get through that and F0 subunit act as a rotor, it is going to move every proton that gets into this F0, it moves a little bit, so then protons falls into the matrix of mitochondrium. Whereas F1 subunit, it has got a catalytic mechanism. F1 subunit has 3 alpha and 3 beta subunits, especially in that beta subunits have got catalytic mechanism and they are going to convert ADP plus PI into AD ATP. So, fast correlation process going on here. Why? Because, so the beta subunit is going to condense ADP with PI using the energy that is coming from flow of protons from intermembrane space back into the matrix. It has proton motive force and the rotor is turning. As the rotor is turning, catalysis is going on in the F1 uh, beta subunit. Okay. So, this is what is phosphorylation process, that is phosphorylation of ADP with PI to make ATP. So, this is how you generate ATP. So, oxygen is consumed here and ATP is generated. So, basically what we are doing here, electron transport is going on. So, this is an oxidation, oxidation of NADH plus H plus, oxidation of FADH2. So, oxidation is going on and you are creating a proton gradient in the intermembrane space and as the gradient is created, protons are moving back to the uh, matrix of mitochondria and that energy present in that that is proton motive force is used and you are making phosphorylation process. 
So the oxidation is coupled with phosphorylation process to make ATP and that is why electron transport chain is called as oxidative phosphorylation. And also note that electron transport chain is referred as a respiratory chain. Why? Because as the electron transport chain is running, you are consuming oxygen there. And how do you get oxygen? You get oxygen from inspiration. So that's uh, related to respiration now. So the higher the electron transport chain, higher the consumption of oxygen, that means higher the respiratory rate. So that is why our electron transport chain is also called as respiratory chain. Okay. So all these things are connected here. So as the oxidation going on here, you are conducting phosphorylation process because you are building a proton gradient there. So it is all a closed system and you generate ATPs. Now how many ATPs you are going to generate? from each molecule of NADH plus H plus and FADH2. As you can see here, NADH plus H plus one molecule, it pumps in, uh, it, uh, it, pumping, uh, it is pumping 10 protons into the intermembrane space. FADH2 oxidation is pumping six protons. Now, for every ATP that is produced here in the ATP synthase complex, you need four protons to the, do that. For every four protons coming into the intermembrane space, you generate one ATP, okay? That means for every 10 protons that are coming from oxidation of NADH, NADH oxidation gives you pumps 10 protons. For every 10 protons, it means you make 2.5 ATPs. Uh, going with this calculation here, four protons equaling to one ATP generation, 10 protons coming down, you are going to make 2.5 ATPs, and FADH2 oxidation will give, uh, it is helping in pumping 6 protons, that means 6 protons equals 1.5 ATPs. Now 2.5 and 1.5, these are just the numbers here, so there is nothing like 1 and half ATP or 2 and half ATP. ATP gives like minus 7.3 kilocals of energy, so that means 2.5 multiplied by minus 7.3 kilocals, that much of energy you get from oxidation of NADH plus H plus. But it is still, it doesn't count to that minus 25.5 kilocals of energy because I, I told you NADH plus H plus oxidation and the flow of electron, it gives around minus 25.5 kilocals of energy. And if you uh, count that like 2.5 multiplied by 7.3, it doesn't count to 25, minus 25.5. So that means Electron transport chain is not an efficient system. It is not an 100% efficient machinery. It just is, its efficiency is around 60% and that means 40% of the energy just loses as uh, lost as heat and that heat it is used uh, basically it maintains our body temperature because our body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. So this inefficiency of electron transport chain machinery being like 60% efficient, so 40% of the energy is released as heat and that maintains our body temperature along with the heat generated from our metabolism or metabolic pathways. This is what is all about electron transport chain. So I have explained basically how NADH plus H plus and why NADH plus H plus gets into complex 1 and why FADH2 gets into complex 2 and how these molecules are oxidized and where these electrons are flowing and what will happen to that uh, because of the flow of electrons. So I hope this video has uh, helped you in understanding electron transport chain. If you have any questions, so don't hesitate to put it in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. And also, uh, I have made a video already on brown adipose tissue, so which you can watch, which is appearing at the end of this video. Also, you get the link for that below this video in the description. Thanks for watching again and I will see you in my next video.